pursuit of passive income. Why do we invest? Well, having spoken to 20 people a week, every week for nearly 15 years around what they're motivated to achieve, what they want out of life, how they can be financially better off. Without doubt, the things that come up time and time again are want to be able to have the choice to send my kids to the school that I want, love to be debt free, I want some financial security in retirement, love to have some money where I can travel and, and explore life. They're the, they're the most common things that we hear. So it got me thinking, today's conversation with Matt, we're going to be talking about the journey of investing. Right? Sounds cliched, but I remember when we were playing footy together, Louis, and I'd be like, right, I'm here at home, we're playing away, I've got to get to this ground. Back in those days, you pull out the Melways and you work out how to get from where you are to where the game is. No joke, the Melways was a thing. Uh, but there were so many things between home and where the ground was right, that impacted that journey. Might be traffic jam, roadworks, traffic lights. You know, we've all had those things and all of those steps on that journey are part of it. You know, they make it better and they make it worse, they make you feel good, they make you feel bad. Um, investing is no different. You know? So what I'd love to unpack with you today is what is your journey of investing like? And you had some amazing insight and mentorship from your dad early days. Mm. Uh, how did you kind of feel as you went across your journey of investing and, and why did you, why did, what did you want to achieve when you started out? Yeah, well, as we know, my old man was, uh, was an investor. Um, it's pretty well documented, but <laughs> he didn't start until I was a, a teenager, really. Like I got to see his journey from, from the absolute start of it. And uh, obviously, Al and I were both really like, heavily invested emotionally. You know, we loved hearing his stories. We'd see his plans out on the table, and we'd kind of always be asking about it. So when I had the chance to start investing, I was gung-ho, and I just couldn't wait. And I'd obviously been reading about it. I'd been going to seminars. I'd been learning as much as I could. And, um, and I had, a, obviously, a partner in my brother to, to co-invest with. And we had our dad, who was kind of there looking over our shoulder, making sure we didn't go too far wrong. And actually, it's funny you use the story about, about getting to footy because I think my journey as well with investing, and I think this is maybe similar for a lot of people in their careers. Like when I started investing, um, it was fun. And yeah. when I started playing football, it was fun. I used to love footy and I was passionate about it. And the longer I played footy and the more serious I got about footy and the more I guess saw I carried the ego of I needed to succeed in, on the footy field, but I also didn't want to let my teammates down. I went from loving, like not sleeping the night before the game because I was excited, to not sleeping because I was anxious, and then you'd be thinking about the game beforehand, and once you start, you love it. Um, but it wasn't again until the end of my career that I realised when I was playing in the vets, got back to loving it like a kid. And I'm, I think it's similar with, um, with investing. I look at my dad, who's 68 now, and he's retired well and truly. Long retired. Yeah, long <laughs> retired. Um, lives very comfortably on a passive income and he's so relaxed. And there was periods in his journey where he probably wasn't as relaxed, where mm. he had some stresses. And, and I know personally that I went from that carefree, not a care in the world in my early 20s because I was on the property ladder. I had a couple of investment properties. I had no kids, no, no responsibilities and um, kind of nothing could go wrong essentially in my mind. Uh, to then having kids and a family and all of a sudden you start really worrying, am, am I making the right decision? Um, do I, does my family need this money? If I, if I invest it and we no longer have access to that cash, will I regret that? Am I better to have kept it in the bank as a buffer or a bigger buffer or whatever? Do I need to pay for a holiday? All those things start going through your mind and you start to carry that anxiety. Um, and I think that that's important, that people don't realise they're looking at this end, they might see and hear stories about my dad who's 68 and go, well, that's a long way away from me who might mm. be 30 or 40. It's a long time to wait. And the reality is you actually don't have to wait to then. And what I discovered, um, and I know from talking to you, it's the same, and Al and Cam and other people who have been on a similar journey, is that once you get some runs on the board, almost like if you're going to your footy match, if you leave 15 minutes earlier and you hit the, the roadblock, it actually doesn't bother you. You just go, oh, I've got plenty of time up my sleeve. If you count yeah. it fine, it, you're stressed. But if you get some runs on the board with property investing, it actually takes all the pressure off. And I remember when the GFC hit, um, and I was obviously in an industry 
in in development industry. I was working for a public company, and there was like it was pretty hot and hairy in Queensland where I was working at the time. And we heard about a bunch of developers laying off like half of their staff, and I was uh, I was a senior manager there at the time, and I remember thinking, all right, this could get really bad. I've seen friends who have lost their their high income and couldn't get couldn't get a job. It's like, how bad could it get? And I actually ran the, literally ran the numbers and I said, if I lose my job, I could sell a house and go on a holiday for the next two years <laughs> and come back when things are a lot cleaner and clearer and I would just walk straight back into a job. And it took all the worry away. Nice safety net, isn't it? Absolutely. Mm. Um, and I think that that's what I got. And it was, I hadn't been investing for that long at that time. That was, I had been for 10 years, but, um, if it happened a year or two too early, it might not have been, I can go overseas for two years, it might have been one year. <laughs> but, but having that confidence that um, no matter what happened, I'd, I'd be able to ride through it, just took all the stress away and I could think clearly and, and make decisions to, I guess, improve tomorrow instead of worrying about just not going backwards. 100%. I think the analogy that we use for a lot of you know, first time investors, it's like riding a bike, it gets easier and so on. It's not until you kind of have these, we have these conversations that I'm able to articulate exactly why we use analogies like that. But it's exactly right, it's because once you've done something once, you're so much more comfortable with it. You know, you're looking to do it again because it worked the first time, you know, which means that you're in a better financial position anyway. Um, you know, you don't just uh, run a marathon, you start by taking one step and then another step and another step and it's just yeah. a sequence of steps. And um, I think the, you know, both um, the empowerment you feel, the results that you get, the confidence that you build, um, you know, the, 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 the um, I don't know what the word is, the warm and fuzzies that you get, the satisfaction and, and, and you know, that you get and the gratification you get from your fa friends and family when you can help impart some knowledge on them. I mean, we started a business doing it because, you know, our family and friends were curious about what we were doing. Um, you know, how that makes you feel, you know, you don't have to be 68 and retired to get all of those things. Yep. You know, it's, uh, it's a really, really powerful, powerful kind of picture, isn't it? Because, um, you know, an end goal can seem like a long way away, but uh, if you start to take some positive steps towards it, it's amazing. Well, even if you miss that, but you get three quarters of it, the outcome's still pretty good. Yeah, and it's one of those things that we know. I mean, even the government um, in their modelling, they call it the wealth effect. Right. When asset values go up, people end up spending more money. And actually, they use more discretionary spending. Their incomes haven't changed, but they've got more wealth because the asset value of their house has gone up. And that's obviously a really powerful tool because the government actually wants asset values to go up for that reason because it then causes people to spend more money in the economy, which gives more jobs and allows wages to ultimately go up. Um, but that, that effect, that knowing, that confidence that you have from owning some assets that are going up in value is invaluable. It changes your life. And it happens on the first property. It happens like it, you get that confidence and it kind of then you move on to your second and all of a sudden it starts to open the doors. And a lot of people, uh, my dad used to say when he started investing, he wanted to own five properties. He wanted right. <laughs> one to pay the bills and the other four were for his lifestyle, provided he owned his own home. So I guess that's like six properties in total. Um, now that changed over time and uh, he went through a period where it needed to be more and then after a while he said, oh, I could actually have gone with less and he'd go through these swings and swings and roundabouts. Um, when I asked him a couple of weeks ago, and he's, he came to, to stay, and I said, when you look back on your investing journey, is there anything you would have done differently? And he said, absolutely. He said, I, would, he have, I would have bought more properties. <laughs> right. <I was> <laughs> like, he goes, oh, I knew it worked. He said, but I still had that nagging thing in the back of my mind where I'd need to be conservative. He said, no, everything that I did, I, most of the things that I ever did worked, or even the ones that didn't, work out as well as he'd hoped still worked pretty well. Yeah. Um, so he kind of just said he wished that he had that confidence. So he was a very conservative investor, but he still ended up doing exceptionally well. And I said, I think it was probably five years into his investing journey that I noticed a big change in his persona, his confidence, his kind of just his ease um, that he went about life. And um, yeah, I, I, I think that that knowing that he had assets behind him and he could see through any, any storms just 
yeah, made a huge impact. And I guess that's a thing that people new to investing don't understand. As you said, it, it's not about a 20, 30 year thing. It's just about the first couple of steps or the first step. And um, the sooner they get on the ladder, on the property ladder, and the sooner they start making those steps, um, then the more buffer they'll have, the freer they'll start to, feed, start to feel. And it makes that second investment easier because you're making that investment knowing my back's not to the wall, I've got some clear space. Whatever I'm doing is improving the outcome for my family and for me. Um, and even though I had it probably when I started investing, I had these grand these <laughs> images of grandeur of what my life was going to be like. The reality is that after the first few years, once you have like a family, all you really want is to know that something happens to me, they're all taken care of. Yep. Um, that I can live freely and I can focus on them and not feel like I have to live a life of, um, I guess, servitude uh, to a job that uh, if you didn't enjoy it, for instance. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the thing. Like you've got a limited amount of time here on this planet. And you want to make sure that you can use as much of it as possible um, doing the things that you really love with people you love. And yeah. that's what I get from investing. And I know when I talk to others, beyond the first, like outside of their 20s, when I talk to others, that's kind of the, the main focus for most people too. Well, it's, um, I think, you know, if we think about how we're brought up in Australia, we're not taught to think about money. Goal setting is not something that the majority of people do, especially financial goal setting, right? Uh, and so the, the kind of natural thing is, right, well, if we think about the major financial decisions that we make, right, well, we want to buy a car or we want to buy a house or we want to, you know, go on a holiday. So it's, um, it's only logical and natural that they're the, the kind of um, aspirational goals that people have when they, when they start out. Because yeah. uh, I was exactly the same. You know, I wanted to have the dream house, I wanted to have the you know, business class travel, I wanted to have the big party for my 40th and all of those things, that yeah, was great. Uh, but I, I'm exactly the same now with you know, family and two young kids. It's just, I love my job, not about to stop tomorrow, but it's nice having the choice because in the last 18 months, my portfolio made more than five times what I earned at work. Mm. Um, and just being able to have that kind of safety net is, is really satisfying and know that you can give the kids the opportunities or yep. um, have that quality time and not be beholden to, you know, got to, yeah. be, um, got to be trying to move forward, you know, in, in, in my mid forties. Um, it's incredibly powerful. So um, was there anything else you wanted to share about your journey, Matt? Oh, not so much um, individually. I mean, other than I said, if you know that you're doing something that works, keep at it and yeah. keep plugging away because you're going to see the benefits. And it's not that you get the benefits just from one. Absolutely, you start seeing benefits from one property. But then when you add the second or the third, you notice it just frees you up. Um, and your confidence about those decisions just gets reinforced. Now, that's not to say you need to own 10 properties. In fact, in today's day and age, four to five would be a great portfolio that will really set you up to have a free life in the future yep. or a life of freedom. But I think we talk, a lot of people talk about financial freedom and I think that there's a misunderstanding of what that might mean um, because absolutely replacing your income with passive income is a really important part of financial freedom. If you get to that point or when you get to that point, then it means you can go away, you can stop working and you never have to work again and you will have the lifestyle you've got today. Now that's ultimate financial freedom and that's a great aspiration. But a lot of financial freedom also comes from having a big asset base, knowing that you've got equity, you've got a buffer that if you did, like I said, when the GFC hit and knowing that the, one of the worst things that could happen in your working career happens and you can still see it through and come out the other side very comfortable, that changes your life as well and that changes your decisions and um, just gives you that that ability to to live your life on your own terms so replacing your income with passive income is the ultimate goal but getting the asset base to the point where you've got those buffers and you've got that level of comfort um, is I would say a close second and the sooner you start investing the sooner you get that get to that point. Now it's going to take 10, 20 years to get the passive income up, but you'll see those benefits in three to five years from the capital growth. So um, don't put it off. The longer you wait, the longer your family waits as well for you to get that 
that sense of, uh, of confidence and comfort. And if you can buy again, just do more like Steve Lewison says. So Absolutely. Thanks for sharing your insights. Hope you found that useful, everyone. Uh, some insights into our journeys. Uh, yeah, everyone talks about passive income. Uh, there are so many more benefits to property investing, but most of all, the security and financial flexibility to do what you want, when you want, and know that you've got a safety net. We hope you found that useful, and we'll uh, look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Conversations with Matt. Bye for now.